Hey, my name is Angela. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a holistic registered dietitian, nutritionist, and today I want to talk to you about three similar studies in regards to what you eat and the risk of diseases as well as longevity of life. All right, so in this first study from the New England Journal of Medicine that was came out on the 24th of February, looked at about 137,000 plus participants aging from 35 to 70 years old, and they looked at their course of what they were eating over nine and a half years. And what they were really looking for or at was the glycemic index of what they were consuming, which is basically when you take a food and you see how it affects the blood sugar. Is it gonna make it spike? Is it gonna make it go up a little bit or just moderately? How well that food affects the blood sugar. They also looked at something very, another aspect, the glycemic load and how it also affected um, the risk of cardiovascular issues and death. And so glycemic load utilizes the glycemic index, but it also looks at the quantity of that carbohydrate and how it's going to affect the blood sugar. Because all carbohydrates are gonna break down to sugar once it gets to the bloodstream, regardless of the source that it comes from. And so the glycemic load provides a better, a little bit better indicator of a response on the blood sugar because it looks at the quantity of the actual carbohydrate and not just the food itself. But in this study, they were looking at those two aspects and what they found, whether it was the glycemic index or the glycemic load, if it was high, if those foods were very high in the glycemic index or the glycemic load, then they increased the risk of cardiovascular disease or increasing the risk of death. So people's longevity of life was very shortened from eating high glycemic foods or high glycemic load type foods. And if you're not sure, um, if you wanna find out a little bit more detailed on what the glycemic index or glycemic load is, Oregon State has a great resource for this. I'll put a link in there in the description box so that you can find out a little bit more information about that. But in one of their articles that they had written, they talked about um, to keep more of a low glycemic index or glycemic load, you definitely want to increase consumption of whole grains, nuts, legumes, fruits, and non-starchy vegetables. And then decrease the ones that are high in the glycemic index or glycemic load by decreasing your intake of starchy, moderate to high glycemic foods like potato, white rice, and white bread or very highly processed type foods as well, uh, also are very high in the glycemic index. Um, another aspect of that, which is definitely your ultra type processed foods like your baked goods, cookies that you're gonna find in the grocery store, candies, uh, soft drinks that are very just sugar laden, that really spikes the blood sugar. So those are gonna be definitely high in the glycemic index and also the glycemic load. And like I said, if you want to find out a little bit more information, I'll put a link to their website that has a lot of different other studies and how the glycemic index or glycemic load affects uh, different types of disease states, not just what they researched in this study, which was about uh, cardiovascular disease and death. All right, so in the second study is in regards to fruit and vegetable intake and mortality. And so this was in a meta-analysis of 26 cohort studies that were involved. And what they took was the studies from about 1980s to 2014 who were free from cardiovascular disease or diabetes or cancer when they started the study. And so the analysis found that in order for these people to live a long life and lower their risk of dying from diseases such as heart disease, stroke, cancer, respiratory, then they needed to eat two servings of whole fruit and three servings of non-starch vegetable. 
And so other I mean, starchier vegetables didn't really have a, an association or help to decrease the risk of dying or, or getting these diseases, but it was the non-starchy vegetables that helped to improve um, longevity of life and decrease the risk of certain diseases as well as whole fruits compared to like if you're drinking fruit juices. And so that's an interesting study of just how valuable our produce that we consume in every day. And it was two servings of fruit a day and three servings of non-starch vegetables in every single day to help reduce risk of diseases and to help to have a better quality of life to definitely help with living longer. All right. All right, so in this third study looked at meat consumption and the risk of 25 common conditions and the outcomes that it had. And so this was in the BMC Medicine Journal and it came out on March the 2nd. And so what they had found is that a higher consumption of unprocessed red meat or processed meats and poultry was associated with a higher risk of several common conditions. And so what they used was data from 474,000 plus middle-aged adults in the UK between 2006 and 2010. And then they followed up again in 2017. And so those who ate meat three or more times in a week was associated with a higher risk of ischemic heart disease, pneumonia, diverticulitis, colon polyps, and diabetes. Just three or more servings of meat in a week. I mean, that's a uh, not as much meat. If you kind of look at it, most people would probably eat meat at lunch and dinner. They might have some type of processed meat like sausage at breakfast. They'll have maybe processed meats at lunchtime with like a sandwich. And then they'll also have some type of like chicken at dinner or steak. And so majority of Americans, I mean, this study was done in the UK, but a majority of Americans are definitely eating way more meat than what was kind of going on in this study. And so according to what they're saying here is that it increases their risk of ischemic heart disease, pneumonia, diverticular disease, colon polyps, and diabetes. Now there could be an association with the fact if they were eating so much meat, they might not have been eating as much vegetables and fruits in their diet. I mean, that might be definitely um, something to kind of look at, which look further into and so but they had found that higher poultry intake was associated with higher risk of gastroesophageal reflex disease gastritis duodenitis so anything that's from your stomach to your intestines again like the diverticular disease gallbladder and diabetes and more this was more common in people or this was definitely higher and those who had a higher BMI. And so they were at more risk for getting these diseases because they were also had a higher weight. They were also had a higher BMI. Even their waist circumference is another thing that they looked at. Those who had a higher waist circumference also ate more meat, also had an increased risk for getting common diseases we see in the everyday. And so again, something that to further look into is to definitely balance out like from the previous study we talked about, is making sure you're getting in plenty of fruits and vegetables to kind of counteract some of this definitely inflammatory type foods, avoiding, uh, avoiding processed type meats like your bacon, your sausage, hot dogs, lunch meats, or all type of processed meats and eating more, yeah, eating more fish instead, or eating more plant-based proteins like your beans, your soy, definitely getting more of that fiber component that can be of help with digestive issues and preventing them from occurring. And so if you wanna find out a little bit more information, like I said, to dive a little bit more deeper into that, then I'll link the link of all these studies in the description box. But I just wanna thank you for watching 
And if you like this, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys have a happy, healthy day.